So, <coughs> in the last lecture, we have discussed the few theorems, the Cauchy's theorem of first kind and Cauchy's theorem of the second kind. We are, we have developed some results, uh, which will help in getting the limit of the sequence. Here. And remember that Cauchy's theorem, Cauchy theorems. Uh, that is, if the sequence a n, if the sequence a n of uh, real numbers converges to L, converges to L, then the sequence sequence a one plus a two plus a n by n, this sequence will also converge to the same point L and we have seen the proof for it. That is a sequence converges to L will imply the convergence of the sequence of their means, alternatic means. The converse of this is not true. Converse of this result is not true in general. That is a sequence a n for which this sigma uh, a 1 plus a 2 plus a n by a n will go to L, but sequence a n may not go to L. For example, if we consider the sequence a n h 1 plus minus 1 to the power n divided by 2, we take this sequence. Obviously, the sequence a n tends to when n is uh, let us take this minus sign sorry let us take this is minus sign all uh, minus take the minus sign 1 minus minus 1 to the power n. So, if the sequence uh, if you choose the sequence a n as 1 minus minus 1 to the power n, then as n is even, then this term becomes positive and this is minus. So, a n will go to 0 along even n's. When n tends to infinity, then along the even direction and when n is even and tends to infinity, then it will go to 0. While when n is odd, then this becomes minus plus 2 and this will go to 1. So, limit of this sequence does not exist. So, limit of the a n as n tends to infinity does not exist. We do not have a single limit here. However, if we consider the a 1 plus a 2 plus a n by n, then this comes out to be say when n is odd. So, when you take n is odd, then a 1 becomes uh, this is plus 1. So, 1 a 3 becomes again 1 because a 3 is this minus minus plus 1. So, 1 plus 1 this will go and total values are when n is odd n plus 1. So, it will go to the n plus 1 by 2 and then divided by n. So, it will go to the tends to this as uh, when n is odd. When n is odd you are getting this value and when n is even then it will be n by 2 into 1 by n. So, in both the cases, so as n tends to infinity, this sequence a 1 plus a 2 plus a n by n, this will go to half, because here it is clearly half and when you divide by n, then you are getting 1 plus 1 by n by 2, which n tends to infinity, it will go to half. So, limit exist. exist. Okay. So, here the Cauchy theorem one side is true that if a n converges to L, then the sequence of their mean values a 1 plus a 2 plus a n sequence of the means will go to the same limit L. 
Similarly, when you go for the second result of the Cauchy, the second result of the Cauchy says that if a 1 a 2 a n this is uh, sequence if n be a sequence of the positive number we are if n be a sequence of positive numbers and limit of and limit of a n plus 1 y a n as n tends to infinity exist n equal to l then limit of the a n to the power 1 by n when n is sufficiently large will also l. The converse is again converse is not true in general. For example, suppose I take the sequence a n s equal to 1 if n is odd and equal to 2 if n is even n is even then a n to the power 1 by n this limit is as n tends to infinity basically a constant to the power 1 by n and as this sufficiently large it will go to 1. So, limit will go to 1 exist, but the limit of this a n plus 1 by a n if I picked up this thing then what happens is then when n is odd the value this will be even. So, this will go to 2 by 1 and if n is here even then it is odd. So, this is even so it will go to half. So, basically the limit will go to as n tends to infinity it the ratio limit does not exist because it keeps on jumping does not exist. and this shows the converse is not true. Okay. So, here these two examples which are which we have discussed let us now we will give few more results which are useful for that. So, let us see the first here is <coughs> fundamental theorems on limit on limit limit of the sequence of real numbers okay so what this theorem says if xn and yn be the sequences of real numbers if x which is a sequence x n and y which is sequence of y n. If x n by n be the sequences of real numbers real numbers that converges to to the real point x and y respectively respectively and let c be any arbit constant r c belongs to r real number then the sequence x n plus y n x n minus y n x n into y n and 
C x C x n and C of x n will converge or converge to x plus by x minus by x into by and c into x respectively. Okay. So, let us see the proof of proof is very simple we have already discussed the proof while considering the sequence of rational numbers and in terms of the Cantor's uh, and Dedekind's case. We have. So, let us see one of the proof of the uh, suppose x n and y n are convergent given suppose x n converges to x y n converges y this is given. So, for a given f sin are greater than 0 there exist n n 1 n n 2 which depends on f sin r such that mod of x n minus x is less than f sin r for all n greater than or equal to n 1 and as well as mod, mod of y n minus y is less than f sin r for all n greater than n 2. Let us take this. Now, choose the n choose say n naught which is the maximum of n 1 and n 2. Okay. So, there is n 1 n 2. So, consider mod of x n plus y n minus x minus y. Now, this is less than equal to x n minus x plus y n minus y. Now, when n is sufficiently large greater than n 1 then this part is less than f sin r when n is sufficiently large from n 2 this part is less than. So, when you choose n to be greater than n naught then this is less than f sin r plus f sin r for all n greater than n naught. Therefore, the sequence x n plus y n will converge to x plus y and that proves the things. Okay. Similarly, <coughs> now, if we take uh, other parts say second is uh, similarly x minus similarly for x n minus y n this sequence will go to x minus y uh, proof will be the same. Then for x n y n let us take this you can let x n given x n converges to x and y n converges to y x n converges to x and y n converges to y. So, we wanted to show that this is less than u. Okay. So, uh, consider x n y n minus x y mode of this. Now, this will be less than equal to x n y n minus y mod of this plus mod of x n minus x into y just by adding and subtracting and applying the triangle inequality which is less than equal to mod x n mod y n minus y plus mod y mod of x n minus x let it be 1. Okay. Now, since our x 1 since the sequence x n is convergent sequence. So, it is bounded. So, there exists m 1 greater than 0 such that all the terms of the sequence is less than equal to m 1 for all n because it is a convergent sequence. So, it must be bounded for all n. Let us suppose capital M is the maximum of m 1 and mod y. So, we can choose this thing like this. Now, further this part from 1 we get mod of x n by n minus x y is less than equal to this is less than m into mod by n minus y 
plus m into mod x n minus x. Now, y n and x n both are convergent sequence. So, for a given epsilon, uh, since x n converges to x, so for given epsilon greater than say 0, there exists some k 1 depends on epsilon such that mod of x n minus x can be made as small as you please. So, suppose I take choose the smaller number as epsilon by 2 n. Similarly, y n converges to y. So, for the given epsilon greater there exists k 2 which also depends on epsilon such that y n minus y is less than epsilon y 2 n. Okay? Now, once you have this then you choose the k as the maximum of k 1 and k 2. Let us take k to be k 1 then if x 1 so for n greater than equal to k for this number what happened use the form uh, 2 we get mod x n by n minus x y is less than equal to now this is less than equal to epsilon by 2 m. So, basically this is epsilon by 2 this is less than epsilon by 2, but this is 2 for a n uh, there exists k 1 such that this is true for all n for all n greater than k 1 and this is true for all n greater than k 2. So, if I choose the k as a maximum of uh, k 1 and k 2 then both the results are true for n greater than k. So, when choose n greater than k then this is less than epsilon by 2 this is also less than so this is less than epsilon from 2. Okay? So, this shows that x n y n converges to this. Okay? So, this implies x n y n this sequence goes to x by as n tends to as n tends to infinity. Okay? So, this will be Similarly, when you take the third and say c, c of x n in a similar way you can do it otherwise by n you can consider as the constant c. So, by n as you can see c c c and it will converge to c x h per this. Okay? Now, if the sequence another result is if x n and y n And this results let it be a this is the fundamental a. So, let next result is b if sequence x n converges to x if sequence x n converges to x and z n is a sequence of non zero and z n is a sequence of non zero sequence of non zero real numbers real numbers that converges to z say z and if z is not equal to 0 and if z is not then the quotient then the quotient sequence x n over z n will go to x over z as n tends to infinity that is the limit of this sequence over divided. Again the proof is can be followed with the epsilon delta definition and the proof runs as it is as follows. Uh, let us suppose z n is a sequence of the number which is given okay, non zero. Let us suppose let uh, alpha 
is half of mod z where z is the limit of z n which is given non zero this is given so let us pick up the alpha like this okay now since z n converges to z so for a given epsilon greater than 0 there exist a natural number or integer there exists a natural number positive integer k1 such that mod of zn minus z mod of zn minus z is less than alpha okay is less than alpha now this implies that j minus alpha is less than equal to minus z n minus z which is less than equal to mod z n minus mod z for all n greater than equal to k 1. Why? Because this is true this is true such that for all n greater than k 1 we have this thing. Now, if I take minus sign then minus alpha is less than this fine. Now, apply the triangular inequality. So, what you get is mod of z minus we got z 1 minus z 2 mod of this is greater than equal to mod z 1 minus mod z 2 this result is true. So, using this result we get this part ok my neither. Now, half of this z so, what will therefore, what will be the mod z minus alpha bring it here this is greater than equal to mod z uh, less than equal to mod z n for n greater than equal to k 1, but z minus alpha alpha is mod uh, z by 2. So, it is basically half of mod z. So, when it is sufficiently large the sequence of the term mod z n is greater than equal to half of mod z. Okay? Now, use this one this is say 1. Okay? Now, consider mod of 1 by z n minus 1 by z. Now, this can be written as mod z n minus z over mod z n mod z, but mod z n is greater than this number. So, it is less than equal to 2 over mod z square into mod z minus z n and this is true for all n greater than equal to k 1. Now, as z minus z n goes to 0 because z n sequence converges to z. So, for a given epsilon l, now for given epsilon l greater than 0 given we can find there exists a natural number of positive integer. k 2 such that if n is greater than equal to k 2 then then mod z minus z n this sequence less than the number epsilon l mod z square by 2 this is a smaller number. So, since z n converges to z so we can identify this thing for all n greater than k 1. Okay. Now, this is true for all n greater than k 1, this is true for all n sorry n n greater than k 2, this is true for all n greater than k 1. So, if I pick this is 2. So, let it be 2. So, if we want to 1 on 2 combine then what happens is <coughs> that this a k if I take k a integer which is maximum of k 1 and k 2. Then this difference can be made less than epsilon l for all n greater than equal to k because both this holds true and this shows the sequence z n 1 by z n goes to k. Therefore, limit of the sequence 1 by z n as n tends to infinity is 1 by z. Okay, let it be 3. 
Now, we are interested in x n by z n. So, it is the as good as x n into 1 by z n. So, the sequence x n into 1 by z n will go to x into 1 by z that is the answer because of the product of the two sequence this is product of the two sequence will go to this. Okay. Then next result is now some results on limits of sequences of real numbers few more results on this. The first result which we call it is a theorem, the theorem 1 says if x n is a convergence sequence is a convergence sequence of real numbers of real numbers and if all the terms of the sequence x n are positive non negative greater than or equal to 0 for all n belongs to capital n. If all the terms of the sequence are non negative then the limit cannot be negative then the limit of this x which is the limit of x n over n will also be greater than or equal to 0. It cannot be a negative limit the limit of the sequence of non negative term will always be a non negative. The proof of this is let us prove by contradiction suppose the limit is negative and then apply the condition for this. So, let us suppose suppose limit x x is negative say x is equal to minus epsilon l. Okay. <coughs> then for this epsilon l uh, for this epsilon l which is greater than 0 there exist for this epsilon l there exist a positive integer say k depends on epsilon l such that such that mod of x n minus uh, x n uh, because this sequence is a convergence sequence. So, basically the x n will lie between the two term x n minus x remain less than epsilon l that is the x n will lie between these two terms less than x plus epsilon l and greater than x minus epsilon l for all n greater than k is it not. Now, epsilon l is given is already chosen minus k minus x. So, from here this shows that x n is less than minus x uh, plus x minus x that is 0 and this is true for all n greater than k. It means the large number of the terms x n are negative. This shows that sequence x n has large number of terms has large number of negative terms which contradicts which is not which contradicts contradicts why contradicts because x n already are positive therefore our assumption is wrong so x must be positive that answer then another results two says if x n n by n are two convergence sequences are two convergence sequences of real numbers of real numbers and if x n is less than or equal to y n for all n belongs to capital n natural number then the limit will also follow the same inequality limit of this is also less than or equal to limit of y n. And similarly for the sandwich theorem which we have 
shown earlier that if x n and by n are the two sequences and z n is a sequence which lies between x n by n and if the limit of x n by n converges to the same limit then z n will also. So, that is the is uh, sandwich theorem which also we have shown earlier. Okay. So, this is what uh, now next is result is uh, divergence uh, uh, sequence we have discussed now theorem third let the sequence x n converges to x. x then the sequence mode of x n this sequence of absolute values absolute values converges to mode x that is if the limit of the sequence is x then limit of the mod x n will also be will be mod of x. The proof is very simple this follows from this inequality x n minus x is greater than equal to mod x n minus mod x triangular inequality we know this result. So, if x n converges to x means for a given epsilon greater than 0 there exist an positive integer positive integer k such that for all n greater than equal to k we have this part is less than epsilon. So, this part less than epsilon means this part. So, this shows the limit of mod x n over n is mod x. So, that is what is so. so okay. <laughs> then if x n be a if x n be a sequence of real numbers a sequence of real numbers that converges that converges to say x to x and suppose that x n is greater than equal to 0, x n is greater than equal to 0, then the sequence under root of x n, this sequence of positive square root of positive square root converges under root x. Okay. The proof is since x n be a sequence of real number that converges to j and we are assuming x n to be greater than 0. So, limit point cannot be negative. So, we are considering only two cases when this is x is equal to 0 and x is greater than 0. So, case 1 when x is equal to 0. So, when x is equal to 0 x n sequence converging to 0 that is x n is tending to 0 where x n are all positive greater than all equal to 0. Okay? They are 0. So, for a given f sin l, so by f sin l for given f sin l greater than 0 there exist an k in positive integer k such that x n x n which is greater than equal to 0 will less than x n minus 0 is less than say f sin l square for all n greater than for all n greater than k. Therefore, under root of x n will less than f sin l for all n greater than k. So, the limit of the sequence x n will so limit of the x n when n tends to under root of this will go to 0. Similarly, if we take x to be non 0 then in that case in non zero and greater than zero because x uh, greater than zero then we consider consider under root xn 
minus under root x. Now, let's uh, rationalize it. So, multiply n divided by under root x n plus a, we get x n minus x over root of x n plus root x. Okay. Now, this is given under root of x n and both are positive. So, this will be this will be less than equal to. So, if I take mod of this mod of this then this is less than equal to mod x n minus x and so this part under root x n plus x is get greater than 0. So, this will be greater than equal to root x. So, it will be less than equal to root x. This is positive, this is positive. So, this will be greater than root x. So, 1 upon this will be less than. Therefore, this limit of this is the same as the limit of this under root x, but this limit is tending to 0. So, this implies that limit will go to the. So, this implies limit of under root x n over n is under root x. So, nothing, not much to be proved. Okay. Then we get, go for. Uh, monotonic sequence we have discussed it already. Now, yes. Subsequence is that and that part is left. So, let us see concept of the subsequence. Subsequence of a real number of real numbers. Real sequence. Okay, so let X n be a sequence of v, a sequence of real numbers. Real numbers, and let n one less than n two, and so on. B Less n k be strictly strictly increasing sequence strictly increasing sequence of natural numbers of natural numbers, then the sequence. Then the sequence x and k, then this sequence x and k given by x n 1, x n 2, x n k, and so on. This given by this is called is called a subsequence of x. Subsequence of x n. Subsequence of x n. Okay. For example, if we take this say, say sequence x n is 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4, and so on. This is a sequence x n. Now, if we take the sequence half 1 by 4, 1 by 16, and 1 by 8, 1 by 60 and so on. Then this is a subsequence, because this is the second place point of this. So, this is the second term, this is the fourth term, this is the lth term is it not and like this. So, we are getting a n 1 n 2 n, n 1 is less than n 2 and less than n 3 and so on we are seeking, but if we take a sequence like this, but if we take a sequence like this say 1 fourth 1 then let it be 1 8 then 1 sixth and so on then this is not a sequence not a subsequence why why it's not a subsequence it's a sequence but it's not a subsequence why because the order is not retained because here n1 this is the fourth term this is the first term this is the first term, this is the lth term, this is the sixth term. 
so there is no such order like this n1 less than n2 less than n1 is not less than n2 n2 is less than n3 but n3 is not less than n4 like this so it does not satisfy the criteria of uh, the subsequence like this please check is it okay so that will be the now this is very interesting results here the result said okay monotone sub sequence theorem monotone sub sequence theorem the theorem says if x equal to x n is a sequence of real numbers is a sequence of real numbers then there is a subsequence there is a subsequence of x that is monotone So, this is a very interesting result that every sequence has a monotone subsequence. Every sequence that is the result is very interesting that every sequence every sequence uh, has a monotone subsequence. subsequence. So, that is the proof. Uh, let us see suppose we have a first we define the term say x 1 x 2 x n. Uh, uh, let us define this term which we call it the as a peak peak ok. The m a term x m is a peak the m a term m a term x m in the sequence x n is a peak is a peak if x n x m is greater than equal to x n for all n for all n such that n is greater than equal to means like this if suppose we are having a sequence x 1 x 2 x n and so on and if we identify a some term x m here such that all after this all the terms of the sequence are of decreasing nature all of decreasing nature and above it is bounded by x m this term x 1 x 2 x n may behave effortlessly may be x 1 is greater than x 2, x 2 may be less than x 3 and so on we do not care, but if we find out some m such that x m is greater than after a certain stage all the terms of the sequence then we say the peak m a x m is the peak of the sequence x n. Okay. So, what we should do here that every sequence using this concept we will prove that every sequence will have a convergent will have a monotone subsequence. So, let us see the two cases when the sequence has an infinite number of peaks and the case when the sequence have only finite number of them. So, suppose x n sequence x has infinite number of peaks infinite number of peaks. Let them arrange this thing arrange these peaks arrange these peaks. Suppose the peak is x m 1 okay. we are then x m 1 then x m 1 is uh, greater than equal to x m 2 greater than and so on because m 1 m 2 m 3 these are the terms m 1 is less than m 2 less than m 3, but the peak x m 1 is the peak after this all the terms of the sequence are less than a then x m 2 <coughs> is another term 
such that after this all the terms are less than this and like this. So, arrange this. So, this sequence will have a decreasing. So, the sequence of the peaks, this sequence of peaks, peaks is a decreasing subsequence, is a decreasing subsequence decreasing subsequence of x. So, in case of the infinite what we will identify the points first peak which is such that after this all the terms of the sequence are less than this identify x 1. Then after certain stage again you will find out some term for which the condition that x m is greater than x n satisfy for all n greater than m, m and like this. So, arrange this thing. In so, you will get a monotonic decreasing sequence for that. Now, if x has a finite number of if x has a finite number finite number of peaks may be 0 also may be 0 no peak this is also possible. So, if the finite number of 0 let these peaks be in increasing this will listed by increasing order. Okay. So, let this peak be arranged in increasing order. Let us have in increasing increasing subscripts subscript that is if m 1 is less than m 2 that x m 1 x m 2 these are the peaks x m say r and arrange in the increasing circuit that is m 1 is less than m 2 less than m 3 and this is m r arrange in this. Now, let us pick up this term let pick up the sum let s 1 is the term which is after this peak r it m r is peak in this first index become beyond this. Then this s 1 cannot be a peak because this is the peak and this is the last peak. So, we cannot take any number which is uh, greater than this can be a peak. So, s 1 is not a peak. Okay. Means, x is finite then s 1 be a first index. Okay. Once s 1 is not a peak it means there will be some point here is m r. So, s 1 is this point something. Now, s 1 is not a peak it means there may be a some number s 2 which is greater than s 1 then only it is a s 2 we can identify. So, there exists an s 2 such that s 2 is greater than s 1 because s 1 is not a peak. So, once it is greater than then the corresponding sequence x s 1 obviously, this peak is less than x s 2 this term will be less than this okay, corresponding. Again since x is 3 2 is not a peak is not a peak. So, we can there exist. So, there exist another term s 3 greater than s 2 such that the term of the sequence x s 2 is less than x s 3 because this is not a peak as this is not a peak. So, a term will be there which is greater than this and continue this. So, once you continue then we get a sequence x x s k a sequence increasing sequence of x which is monotone monotone increasing sequence. So, this shows that every sequence will have a monotone subsequence it has a subsequence of x that is monotone. Following these two we have an important result which is known as the Volzano Restas theorem. The Volzano Restas Theorem. What this theorem says a bounded sequence 
a bounded sequence a bounded sequence of real numbers has a convergence of sequence has a convergent subsequence has a convergence of. So, that is very uh, important result because it shows that every bounded sequence of real number it may not be a convergence like minus 1 to the power is not a convergence, but it has a bounded convergence subsequence at least one bounded convergence subsequence will be there. The proof is based on the previous result. Uh, suppose x n is a bounded sequence is a bounded sequence of real numbers of bounded sequence of real number. Then it has a um, uh, subsequence x in that that is monotone. Now, since it is a bounded sequence of real number, so it will have then it has suppose a bounded sequence uh, of real number. Okay. Then it has a subsequence because every sequence has a subsequence it had a subsequence x and k that is monotone by the previous result that is monotone by the previous result. Okay. Now, since subsequence is also bounded since this subsequence this subsequence is also bounded. So, it follows from the monot so, so uh, every now one thing this is a subsequence which is monotone and is bounded. So, by bounded by the monotone theorem monotone convergence theorem monotone convergence theorem says that if a sequence which is monotone or and bounded above or below must be convergent by monotone convergence theorem this sequence will be convergent. So, this proves that a bounded sequence of real number has a convergent subsequent that proves the result. Now, this completes your first module that is uh, Cantor's third Dedekind's and theory of sequences. Now, here are the books which I followed books which are used uh, reference the first book which I take it as a introductory by Robert G. Wartel uh, introductory introduction to real analysis. Second book which I followed is by Ensoran that is theory of real theory of real variables. I think that is the theory of real variables or something I will give the name exactly theory of real variables or theory of real functions like that. So, mainly these two books I followed for this section. Thank you very much.